Lesson seven, work, energy, and power. Energy is defined as the capacity or ability to do work or to accomplish a task. It's a scalar quantity, so it doesn't have a direction associated with it. The symbol for energy is the capital letter E, and the unit for energy is the joule. There are various forms of energy in the universe. Some of these you'll be familiar with, and some of them will be new to you. We have chemical energy, sound energy, radiant energy, nuclear energy, electric energy, thermal energy, gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and elastic energy. In this unit, we're going to be looking at gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and thermal energy in much detail. What you should be concerned about when identifying the different types of energy is the types of transformations when you convert one type of energy into another. The different forms of energy are able to change from one to the other. For example, if I were to hold a, bu a ball above the earth and then drop it, the gravitational potential energy that the ball initially had would change to kinetic energy as the ball falls and gains speed. Closely related to the concept of energy is the concept of work. Work is defined as the transfer of energy. Whenever energy is transferred, it is because work has been done. Work is also a scalar quantity. The symbol for work is the capital letter W. And the unit for work is the same as the unit for energy, and it's the joule, whose symbol is capital J. We have an equation to calculate work, and that equation states that work is equal to F times delta D, where F is the force applied, and it's measured in newtons, and delta D is the distance the force has been applied across and it's measured in meters. If you multiply force times distance, you get the units newtons times meters, and one newton meter is equivalent to one joule. That's how we derive that quantity. So remember that. In order for work to be done, three conditions must be met, and you must remember these conditions. So we'll put a little star, so that you remember them. Condition number one, a force must be exerted on an object. Condition number two, the object is displaced by the force. And condition number three, this is the trickiest one. The force is in the same direction as the displacement. Let's look at an example. If you push a recycling box five meters along the sidewalk using a horizontal force of 300 newtons, what is the work that is done? So work is equal to the force times the displacement. We have a force of 300 newtons and a displacement of five meters. If you put this into your calculator, you will see that we have 1,500 joules of work, okay? You can have positive work and negative work. Negative work is when the force and the displacement are in opposite directions. So let's identify these two conditions for negative work. The force and the displacement are in opposite directions. And an example would be friction. So imagine we have a box on a rough floor. And I say rough floor because that implies that there will be friction. And the box is moved this displacement forward. Friction always opposes the motion. So friction will be in the backwards direction. Whenever the force and the displacement 
are in the opposite direction, the work done is negative. There are also situations in which you will have zero work done. We define that as situations in which the displacement and the force are perpendicular. So whenever the force and the displacement are perpendicular, that means at 90 degrees from one another. So we have force in one direction and displacement in another direction. When these two are 90 degrees from one another, the work done is zero. We can actually have zero work under three conditions. If the force is zero, if you're applying no force, there will be no work. If you're applying force but there's no displacement of the object, there's no work. And finally, as we mentioned, if the force is perpendicular to the displacement, then there's no work done. Let's take a look at this example. A worker lifts a box 10 kilograms upwards 95 centimeters from the floor and then walks across the room and sets it down. I'm going to need a little bit of space here to answer this question, so I'm going to add a page. You may need to do so as well. I'm just going to copy and paste this question so that we can see it in a more appropriate space over here. Okay. So let's look at part A while we're lifting the box. We're lifting this box 95 centimeters or 0 0.95 meters above the ground. In order to lift the box, you have to apply a force in the upward direction. And in order to lift a box, the force must be equal to the force of gravity. If you want to lift something, you have to overcome the force of gravity. And we can calculate the force of gravity and thus the force applied to lift this box by using the equation for gravity, mg, where the mass of this box is 10 kilograms. g is the gravitational constant, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we learned this in a previous section. If you punch this in, you end up with 10 times 9.8 is 98 newtons. Now let's find the work done in lifting this box using the equation for work. Work equals F delta D. That's 98 newtons times a distance or displacement of 0.95 meters up. If you punch this into your calculator, you end up with a work done of 93 joules. So when you lift the box, 93 joules of work are done. Therefore, 93 joules of work is done in lifting the box. In part B, we're still holding on to this box, but we're going to move it to the right. It's going to be above the ground. As we're walking with this box, we're going to still have to apply a force in the upward direction to overcome the force of gravity. And we're moving in this direction. If you notice, as you're moving across the floor, so we're taking this box and we're moving it you just animate this, we're going to move it across the floor. Your force is still in the upward direction in order to maintain this box, but your displacement is forward. The angle in between these two vectors is 90 degrees. These two vectors are perpendicular. Whenever 
the force and the displacement are at 90 degrees, zero work is done. Even though it takes energy to move this box across the floor, you have not changed the energy of the box itself. You've changed your own energy in holding the box, but the box still remains a certain height above the ground and hasn't gained or lost any type of energy. We'll explain this more when we talk about the different types of energy. In part C, we want to set down the box. If we lower this box, back down to the ground, so 0 0.95 meters or 95 centimeters. Our displacement will be in the downward direction as we move this box lower, but in what direction do we need to hold or apply onto the box? When you are lowering a box, you're not applying a force downward on the box when lowering. You're actually still applying an upward force, and I want you to try this. If you were to press down on the box, it would actually fall to the ground. In order to lower a box, you still have to apply an upward force that is equal to the force of gravity and can be calculated using the formula mg. And since we're dealing with a 10 kilogram box and gravity on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, the force we're applying is 98 newtons. Now, since the force and the displacement, the force and the displacement are in opposite directions. The angle in between them is 180 degrees. That means they're in opposite directions. Then that means that there will be negative work. Not zero work and not positive work, but negative work. And I'll explain this in a minute. So when you punch this in, work equals F delta D, that's 98 newtons times 0 0.95 meters. You must put in a negative sign. Punch it into your calculator, you get negative 93 joules. So the work done in lowering the box is zero. So let me explain why that is. Let's take a look at this box. We said the box is resting on the ground. We raise the box, and when we do, it gets 93 joules of energy because we lifted it, and then we lower it, and it reduces its energy to negative 93 joules. If you have 93 joules plus negative 93 joules, you get zero. Zero work. If you lift a box from the ground, let's say the box is initially on the ground and you lift it, you've done 93 joules of work. And then you lower it, you do negative 93 joules of work. If you lift it and lower it, it's like you didn't even touch the box. It still remains on the ground. If the box is still on the ground, if it started on the ground and remains on the ground, that means you've done no work to the box. Even though you used up your energy, the total work done on the box is zero. The next concept that we're going to look at is power. Let's say I can lift 100 kilograms and Manuel can lift 100 kilograms. Which one of us is more powerful? If we're both able to lift an object of the same mass, what distinguishes the difference in the power between us is how fast we do it. If I do it faster than Manuel, then I am more powerful. Power is defined as the rate of doing work or the rate of transferring energy.
The equations, there are two of them, though they are very much related. We have power is equal to work over elapsed time, or power is equal to the energy transferred over elapsed time. Remembering that the work done is equal to the change in energy. That's why these two equations are equivalent. So power is measured in watts. One watt is given the symbol one capital W, and it's equal to one joule per second. Let's look at an example. A mover lifts a large chair with a mass of 100 kilograms off the ground to a height of 1.3 meters in order to put it on a truck doing 1,300 joules of work. If it takes him 1.5 seconds to lift the chair, what is his power output? So we have the work done is 1,300 joules, and the time taken to do this work and remember, we were lifting a chair. That's my best chair drawing. We're lifting this chair 1.3 meters off the ground. And its mass is 100 kilograms. They're giving us a lot of information. But we actually don't even need all of this information in order to answer this question. We know that power is equal to the work done over time. So that's 1,300 joules divided by 1.5 seconds. If you punch this into your calculator, 1,300 joules divided by 1.5 seconds you end up with 867 watts of power. That's the power generated by lifting that chair 1.3 meters above the ground in an elapsed time of 1.5 seconds. Okay, you have homework practice questions for energy transformations, for work, and for power. When you're done, there will be an LMS quiz that corresponds to this note. Good luck.